Guys, you gotta check this place out. Listen, they have the longest fence in the world, jacked kangaroos, the Great Barrier Reef, and a sick opera house. I mean, look at this thing. Guys, I think I'm sold. This place is literally paradise. I'm packing my stuff up right now and moving to Brisbane ASAP. And nothing is gonna change my mind. Oh, no. No! Yeah, guys, I hate to burst your bubble. You know, I hate being the bearer of bad news, but, uh... Australia be getting some tornadoes. Also, they have some absolutely deadly and terrifying animals. I mean, like, the jacked kangaroos are cool. But if I walk outside my door, and I see this thing looking straight at me... Yeah, I'm gone. It's over. I'm done. Anyways, tornadoes. Australia's got them. And as you can see from this map, they have two distinctive tornado alleys. One in the west, and one in the east. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Australia's different tornado alleys and the most significant tornadoes that have spawned in each alley. Let's get into it. We're going to be kicking off this video by talking about Australia's western tornado alley. It doesn't see as much tornadic activity as its eastern counterpart, but quite a few notable ones have taken place in this alley. There was the Bustleton Tornado of July 10th, 1964, which only killed one person when their car was sucked up and thrown by the tornado. And then on December 21st, 1977, the Northam Tornado touched down and was described as the most beautiful Australian tornado. This is because the tornado's vortex turned red when it picked up red-colored dirt. Outside of ripping apart some gum trees, this tornado didn't really do anything. Now, we're gonna jump ahead about 30 years to the Perth tornado of June 9th, 2008. This tornado struck the suburbs of Perth at 7.30 in the morning. 130 homes were damaged, and an aged care facility in Coolangoop had its roof completely blown off. But luckily, there were not any fatalities. Jumping ahead about six years, the city of Perth became a target for a major tornado outbreak which took place on July 14th, 2014. In the suburbs of Hilton and O'Connor, Power lines were downed, roofs were torn off, and many trees were snapped by a violent tornado. Steve Howarth, a resident of Hilton, described the scene. As the tornado moved into his neighborhood, he said there was a huge green flash. The power cables came down, then you could hear a pickup in the noise outside, and it's just chaos. Another tornado touched down and caused damage in the town of Claremont, as well as a third tornado that damaged areas of Beliar. But, in the town of Beaconsfield, a sad story unfolded. As one of the tornadoes from the outbreak moved into the town, it cut off the power of a home where two men with muscular dystrophy lived. Both of the men were on life support, which was dependent on electricity. And sadly, because of this power outage, their life support shut down, leaving both men to ultimately pass away. Let's jump ahead five years and talk about the Port Headland tornado which took place on March 24th, 2019. What essentially happened was that Cyclone Veronica made landfall in Western Australia and spawned a weak tornado. Trees were knocked down, roofs were damaged, and a trampoline was thrown out of its yard. Just imagine that. Like, you look out your window and a trampoline's rolling down the street. I'm assuming that probably didn't happen, but it would be crazy if it did. Overall, this tornado only resulted in one injury. The last tornado I want to talk about from this alley happened not too long ago. The Southern Bunbury Tornado touched down on May 10th, 2024. The tornado formed off the coast of Bunbury and gradually moved inland. It lasted about four minutes. What's notable about this tornado is that it struck the Bunbury Regional Prison. Here, several of its buildings were destroyed. And look at this picture too. The tornado severely damaged the Bunbury PYCY building. Steve Wallace, a local resident sheltering from the tornado, described its sound as like a roaring train going past, but louder. All in all, this tornado damaged 220 buildings and left two people injured. And overall, it's pretty clear that the Western Australian Alley gets its fair share of tornadic activity. The Eastern Australian Alley has had a frequent number of tornadoes over the years. The first recorded tornado in Australian history took place in this alley. It was the 1795 Sydney Tornado. It was reported that the tornado damaged crops and some land in Sydney. 
but because this tornado took place so long ago, we don't know that much about it. Roughly 66 years later, a tornado touched down in the town of Chetwind on July 1st, 1861. It picked up and carried several trees, huts, and poles very long distances. It was also reported that the tornado picked up and carried two men. One of them reportedly hit the ground and died on impact. On November 19th, 1897, the Nil tornado took place, and this tornado pretty much destroyed all of the town's houses and churches. The town of Donald saw one death, and several buildings were destroyed. And in Murrayboro, there was two deaths recorded. All in all, this tornado resulted in 50,000 Australian pounds of damage. Now, one of the more significant Australian tornadoes to take place was the Brighton Tornado, which happened on February 2nd, 1918. Brighton is actually a suburb in the city of Melbourne, which is the most populated city in the Australian state of Victoria. So yeah, this tornado was kind of a big deal. Check this out, y'all. There's actual footage of the tornado damage. Shout out to the cameraman. At 5.45 p.m. that day, two tornadoes touched down in Brighton Beach and moved inland. There was even reports of a third tornado touching down as well. Hundreds of houses had their roofs torn off. As you can see in this photo, Hawthorne Methodist Church was almost completely annihilated. But later on, it was rebuilt. F3 damage was reported all across Brighton, and the highest wind speed of one of its tornadoes was reported to be about 200 miles per hour. But somehow, there was luckily only two fatalities. And to this day, the Brighton tornado is the strongest severe weather event to ever take place in the city of Melbourne, Australia. Now, it's time to talk about one of the strongest Australian tornadoes ever, the Buladila tornado. It took place on January 1st, 1970, literally the first day of the year, in the Australian state of New South Wales. On that day, at 3.45 p.m., a tornado touched down in the Buladela State Forest. It picked up a 4,400 pound tractor and tossed it through the air. According to reports, about 1 million trees were destroyed. The wind speed of this tornado was documented to be over 261 miles per hour. But, since it took place in a state forest and no one was there, there was luckily zero fatalities and zero injuries. Let's go. Because I mean, 261 miles per hour, that's absolutely absurd. On a positive note, throughout the early 2000s, there weren't that many tornadoes or tornado outbreaks throughout the eastern alley of Australia. But on January 26th through 27th, 2013, the central Queensland tornado outbreak happened. And this event caused more casualties than usual compared to other Australian tornadoes. Because of the remnants of Cyclone Oswald, multiple towns and cities were struck by a total of six tornadoes. One town in particular, Burnett Heads, was struck by three different tornadoes on the same day. Overall, even though there were luckily zero fatalities from this outbreak, it led to over 20 injuries, which is way more than the other Australian tornadoes. On November 1st, 2015, a tornado touched down in the northern portion of Victoria, Australia. This tornado formed as a result of a squall line, which is a group of multicellular storms moving in an organized line. Damage was reported in the towns of Nathalia, Strathmerton, and Cobram. Many homes had their roofs torn off, often to the point where they were unsuitable to live in. And then on September 28th, 2016, a tornado outbreak involving seven tornadoes struck the state of South Australia. One of the tornadoes, in F2, which touched down in the town of Blyth, brought down two high-voltage power transmission towers and damaged a church as well as multiple houses. Another F2 tornado, which touched down in the town of Wilmington, brought down five transmission towers. The total impacts of both the Blyth and Wilmington tornadoes led to a statewide blackout in South Australia. The last tornado we're going to discuss from this alley is the Gold Coast Tornado, which took place on Christmas Day, 2023. This took place in the state of Queensland, Australia, and it was an F2 tornado with wind speeds up to 120 miles per hour. Unfortunately, one woman was killed when a tree toppled over and fell on her car. Along with that casualty, many trees were uprooted and several houses were destroyed. 
In closing, Australia as a whole sees a decent amount of tornadoes, but fortunately, in most cases, there's hardly any deaths or injuries. And with that, this crazy weather phenomenon that we call a tornado will continue to be respected and feared by people from all over the world. If you want to learn about Asia's many different tornado alleys, click this video right here. If you want to learn about South America's various tornado alleys, you can click this video right here. Comment down below what videos you want to see from me in the future, and also, subscribe to the channel. Have a great day everyone, peace.